Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of Mass. We're uh, joining one another on the live stream today as we continue our lockdown. So please uh, let's remember one another in prayer. These are testing times. We pray for those two who are caring and shielding at home. Ask the Lord to be with us all as we gather. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our Ordinary Time Gospel for this year is the Gospel of Mark. So we just have a few weeks of Ordinary Time now. We've got today, the fourth Sunday, we've got the fifth and the sixth, and then we'll be celebrating Lent. So that proper season offers us... um, as well as some Gospels from Mark on the Sundays, uh, other Gospels too, but we've got the introduction really to Mark's Gospel and the introduction to the presentation of Jesus. Um, who, who, who is this? Is the question continually asked uh, in the first half of Mark's Gospel. So today is, is no different. Uh, and today and the next few weeks will be stories about Jesus teaching and healing um, and word and action from the kernel of today's gospel, of which more after we've heard it. That we might celebrate worthily, we call to mind our sins, and we ask God's pardon. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind, and love everyone in truth of heart. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Your God will raise you up, For a prophet like myself, from among yourselves, from your own brothers, to him you must listen. This is what you yourselves asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly. Do not let me hear again, you said, the voice of the Lord my God, nor look any longer on this great fire, or I shall die. And the Lord said to me, all they have spoken is well said. I will raise up a prophet like yourself for them from their own brothers. I will put my words into his mouth, and he shall tell them all I command him. The man who does not listen to my words, that he speaks in my name, shall be held answerable to me for it. But the prophet who presumes to say in my name a thing I have not commanded him to say, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that that today today you would would listen listen to his voice, voice, harden harden not not your hearts. hearts. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs, let us hail the Lord. Oh, Oh, that that today today you would would listen listen to his voice, harden harden not your hearts. Come in, let us kneel and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that that today you would would listen listen to to his his voice, voice, harden harden not your hearts. hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test. When they tried me, though they saw my work. 
Oh, oh that today you, you would listen, listen to his voice. voice. Harden not, not your hearts. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would like to see you free from all worry. An unmarried man can devote himself to the Lord's affairs. All he need worry about is pleasing the Lord. But a married man has to bother about the world's affairs and don't devote himself to pleasing his wife. He is torn two ways. In the same way, an unmarried woman, like a young girl, can devote herself to the Lord's affairs. All she need worry about is being holy in body and spirit. The married woman, on the other hand, has to worry about the world's affairs and devote herself to pleasing her husband. I say this only to help you, not to put a halter around your necks, but simply to make sure that everything is as it should be, and that you give your undivided attention to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his followers went as far as Capernaum, and as soon as the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them, because, unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In their language... In their synagogue, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and it shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions, and with a loud cry, went out of him. The people were so astonished that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders to unclean spirits, and they obey him. And his reputation rapidly spread everywhere, throughout all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned last week that my father and his brothers, my uncles, were avid followers of the Western as a as a form of movie making uh, and as a genre of, of, of film, um, and that kind of transferred itself to to myself and my brothers, dad's three three sons, um, and it seems to ring a bell. It's maybe a generational thing because quite a number of you have mentioned to me that that was a feature of someone in your household too. The, 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 the love of, of the Western uh, genre of film. Um, and uh, it, it was lovely, it's lovely that people listen, it's lovely that the feedback, so you know, don't, don't, don't be afraid to do that. It's very affirming, actually, very encouraging, um, and I'm always happy to have tips for improvement on preaching. Um, but it, 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 the, the conversation went around to how, how that form of, of, of film was everywhere, it, it spilled out into other kinds of film as well, um, and one that came up for, for discussion was, um, was Ben-Hur, uh, it, it was mentioned by a couple of you, um, because it was really a western but set in the time of Jesus, because it's, it's, about, it's about justice and righteousness, it's about loyalty and truth, um, all, all of those things, the, the westerns are about goodies and baddies, uh, and it's, it's a great movie, but it, it's, it's a western if you like, with, with Jesus in it. Um, I, 
But the one thing everybody remembers about Ben-Hur, of course, is the chariot race, which was one of those great set pieces of biblical epics that uh, Cecil B. DeMille uh, was, was famous for championing. Um, the, 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 a lot of the profundity of the, of the movie is not remembered. Everyone remembers the chariot race. It was Barry Norman, the film critic, uh, his summary of Ben-Hur was Faith, Hope and Chariots. Uh, and it's, it, I mean, people remember action, uh, which is quite interesting given everything that's in the movie. Um, but action seems to stick in the memory, which makes it really intriguing for me when I hear that passage from Mark's Gospel. Because Jesus casts out this unclean spirit that's shouting at him, and he shouts back. Uh, so there's, there's a shouting match going on, um, and the people that then remark on his teaching. I thought it was quite remarkable. I would have thought people would remark more on the action. They do get round to it, but it's the teaching that they mention first of all, and it distinguishes from other things that they're taught and other people who teach them, they say, by his authority. Now, I think we get the difference between power and authority. We, we, we'll we recognise that we give power to people, even politicians, and sometimes they use it wisely and sometimes less so. But it doesn't automatically confer authority. And we know authoritative figures who have no direct power over our lives, that Pope Francis speaks with great authority, but, you know, there are many who listen to his authority who are not subject to him uh, as members of the church. So, we get that, you know, I'm thinking, could, could we name figures who don't really have power but they have authority, and such is their authority that they gain power? Good examples would be Gandhi, um, he, had, he had no power, the British colonial rulers had the power, but Gandhi spoke with authority. Um, Nelson Mandela, it was Pete Bota and the apartheid government that had the power, but Nelson Mandela had the authority. And so far in Mark's Gospel, all we've, we've had is presentations about what Jesus has said and how significant he was to the crowds of people who followed him. And yet, he had no power. And we have today a reflection on the fact that those with power don't seem to speak as authoritatively as Jesus does. So there's a, a movement in the Gospel, and we'll see that more and more in the next couple of weeks, where the, the, the teaching and the healing, the teaching and the miracles will go together. But there's a, a recognition of, a, of an imbalance which is being changed. Jesus had no power, but speaks with authority. And those in authority had power, but their own authority was waning. And what was the difference? Well, the difference was that Jesus, when he brings healing, when he casts out evil, it's effective. When he tells the unclean spirit to leave the man, it does. And when people see that what he says brings about an effect, then that gives him authority. They recognise that he is worth listening to because he exercises his power with restraint and for the good. And I think that makes the difference for us if we see people in power, exercise it with restraint and for the good, then it gives them authority. And I imagine what is true for others is true also for ourselves. We have power in the lives of other people. We can be influential. How shall we use that? Shall we use it authoritatively? Or shall we be ineffective in the good that we can do? If we chose and if we continue to choose to exercise what power we have, no matter how limited we feel it is, but we can touch the lives of others, if we do it for their good and we do it in a way which respects their freedom, so with restraint and for their good, then we can be extraordinarily authoritative even if we are not powerful. And we are trying to be like the Lord Jesus. We're trying to be figures who speak with authority although we have little power. So Mark is going to make that a wee theme and you can look out for it week to week. Those 
with no authority, Jesus, have great power. And those with great power, the religious authorities of the day, uh, have no authority. So it's, uh, it's good to recognise that those are realities in our world and indeed in our lives. And when our words and actions match one another, if what we say and what we do um, are congruent one with another, then we have extraordinary authority. So if we are preaching uh, the Lord's forgiveness, we're speaking of love, we're speaking about faith, hope and charity, if our actions reflect those words, then we too will have authority and we too will be in a position to bring about the good. So for the courage to act as we speak and speak as we act for each other and ourselves, we pray today. Let's offer together our prayers of intercession. Grant to the church the grace to resist evil and to bring release to those who are in its power. In the authority of the Lord, may she do his present work on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the healing of the nations from all strife and violence. May those in authority, made free from greed and the love of power, rule with justice and mercy. May the darkness be dispersed and the glory of God revealed. O Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Be close to us with our families and friends and in all our relationships. Keep them free from all that would harm them. Forgive the faults and imperfections in this community and fill it with your good spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on the mentally ill and give patience to those who care for them. We pray that all who through folly or intention have fallen into evil ways shall be made whole. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died unreconciled and in fear. Grant them the peace that here they did not know and the vision that they have lost. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we pray for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who are unwell and those who care for them, be that in the context of home, hospital or care home. The Lord will be with them all, give courage strength and healing. I ask you to pray for our partner school and parish in Malawi, St. Patrick's. Um, Father Sam, the rector, was in touch through the week to say that uh, 40 of the boys tested positive for coronavirus. Um, and you will know that uh, there is not a, a great deal of medical coverage available. So that's a cause of great concern both to him as an individual and indeed to the country as a whole, which has so far evaded the worst effects of the pandemic, but now is beginning to suffer from it. We pray for the young people of our own communities, for those who are in Our Lady of Peace and those in St. Benedict's, and those who teach them. That work continues even during lockdown. The Lord will give them all courage, strength and the desire to live, to learn, to love. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who have died recently, especially Johannes Edvalson and Marie McGowan. And we pray for those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer.
that they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, be close to your people, we pray. Guide us to exercise our power with gentleness and integrity so that we may share the authoritative message of the gospel. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our salvation. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks to raise you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite holiness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Holy Spirit, we never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while together with the whole church, with one voice, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed also your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your own right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on this offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your Church, which is in Linwood, by the light of the Gospel. Strengthen the bonds of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, so that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Conville and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ Jesus your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I ask you to check our Facebook and uh, website for our weekly bulletin? We prayed in particular for the repose of the soul of Johannes Edvalson and Marie McGowan. Uh, Johannes' funeral will be on Friday. We'll leave from the church here at 5 past 12 to go to the crematorium. And Marie McGowan, her funeral will be at 10 o'clock mass on Monday, the 15th of February. So please remember them and the, their families in your prayer. I ask particular your prayer for our partners in Malawi. It's a, a very difficult time for them. We'll gather again uh, on uh, Tuesday morning for Mass at 10 o'clock. I hope you can join. Meantime, I hope you have a nice day and a good week ahead. Let's ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.